Is glass a liquid? Humans have been making and using glass for a while. People in Mesopotamia were combining sand, limestone and soda, not the drink kind but a mineral, to create glass. And glass is hugely useful. We use it in bottles, artwork, windows, decorations, mirrors. It's incredibly useful. It's rigid, most often transparent, and we've been using it in buildings for many hundreds of years. Glass is great, but some folks think it's a liquid. But is it? Let's talk about it. If I'm holding a glass, I would say it doesn't look like a liquid or feel like a liquid, but perhaps it's super cooled, or maybe it's really, really slowly flowing. The idea came about because often when looking at really old buildings, and I'm talking cathedrals with windows that are many hundreds, even over a thousand years old, you'll sometimes observe that the glass is thicker at the bottom of the window compared to the top, which could hint that it's actually flowing just really, really slowly. But is it? And I feel like I shouldn't reveal the answer until later in this video so as to appease the YouTube algorithm and to keep my watch time up, but I'm not going to do that because it turns out that glass is actually very unusual and quite unique. So is glass a liquid? No, but it's not your typical solid. Most solids are what we will call crystalline solids. The big difference is how the particles that make up the solid are arranged. In a crystalline solid, the particles are arranged in a lattice, very tightly packed and very uniform. This means that they have certain characteristics like a predictable melting point because each particle shares the same number of neighbors as all the other particles. This quartz is a classic crystalline solid. It's pretty common for it to have flat surfaces and when not carved or eroded, the faces meet at angles. Other crystalline solids often are like this too. When a crystalline solid is cleaved or broken, it will often result in a flat surface. Quartz is not alone. Over 90% of naturally occurring minerals are crystalline solids. Sand, limestone, clay, diamonds, metals, salts are all crystalline solids. Then I've got some obsidian. Obsidian is not a crystalline solid. It's an amorphous solid. It's solid, but its particles aren't arranged in the same lattice that we see in a crystalline solid, no. They're a little more all over the place, in a far less regular arrangement. Obsidian actually has the same chemical composition as granite, but it's not granite. It's formed differently to granite, even though it's the same chemical makeup. When it's cleaved or broken, we get these curved surfaces. Look at how those curved lines within the surface of it look. It's just really cool. But how does this have the same chemical makeup as granite and not be granite? Well, it's to do with how it's formed. Obsidian is a naturally occurring glass. Why? Because of how it was formed. Both granite and obsidian are igneous rocks, rocks that were molten, then cooled and became solid. Both were at some point magma, like in a volcano. The difference is that obsidian was cooled much faster than granite, usually by coming in contact with water or air, and forms without the lattice structure. What's that got to do with glass? Well, obsidian is a volcanic glass. It is a naturally occurring glass. The glass that we have today has similar properties. We mix a few particular minerals together and cool it reasonably quickly through an annealing process which controls the rate of cooling so the outside doesn't cool faster than the inside so it doesn't crack, which is cool. So glass is an amorphous solid. It doesn't have the lattice structure that most rocks and metals have, but does it make it a liquid? No. It's definitely a solid. Atoms and particles in liquids shift, which is why it flows. But it would take billions of years for any of the particles to shift at all. It's not a liquid, not even an extremely slow flowing one. It's a solid, just a different kind of solid. If you're interested in slow flowing liquids, check out the pitch drop experiment. It's been running since 1927, has the world record for longest running lab experiment and has so far made 10 drops, but the 11th one could happen any day now. Well, any day in the next eight or so years. 
You can actually visit at the University of Queensland or check out the live stream. There is a link in the description below. And by the way, there are other amorphous solids. We use them all the time. There aren't many naturally occurring amorphous solids, but there are plenty of human-made ones. Plastic, glass, gels, and rubber, just to name a few. They aren't liquids, they're amorphous solids. I hope that's sorted things out. Oh, but why do really old windows appear thicker at the bottom than the top? Well, it turns out that's how they were made. Maybe not intentionally, but when they made panels out of glass, for very, very old buildings. They blew a cylinder, then flattened it out, and one end tended to be thicker than the other, which was generally placed at the bottom. It's not flowing. I can appreciate that the folks who made the observations of these windows and drew that conclusion probably weren't meaning to mislead anyone. Misunderstandings happen, but digging deeper is important so that we can be as right as we can. It's something I'm trying to do in myself with these videos. And if you'd like to check out anything I've spoken about in today's video, please check out the resources I used for it in the link document down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love to know with the like button and the comments below. I invite you to subscribe to That's Pretty Cool for more videos that investigate questions and explore topics, many of which inspire me a sense of curiosity and wonder. Take care, stay curious, and I'll see you next time.